Good morning, everyone. Welcome as we've gathered on this first Sunday in November for worship. And you can see that we are set up here to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion as well. A uh, reminder that at the conclusion of our worship time this morning, we are moving right into a congregational meeting to receive the report and our recommendations of our uh, joint search committee. So uh, I jokingly, half jokingly, said to a couple people at the end of worship, if you really, I will be at that door. Uh, and if you really need to leave uh, without the meeting and have a note. No, for those who, who can't stay and, and need to leave, uh, we understand I'll be there, but we invite everybody. Everybody will have the opportunity to be a part of, of any discussion and uh, presentation. My name is Jerry Hofstetter. I have the privilege of serving in transitional ministry here for a number of months now, and a few more months anyway. And uh, it's my privilege to be among us, and it's great to see you folks, and I welcome you on behalf of this faith community. Any persons who are visiting with us, there is, as you make your way down the center aisle, to the left, a desk with a table, and we invite you to put your name there so we can have a record of your time among us. Uh, in terms of uh, pastoral care, and on a sad note, I want to acknowledge the passing yesterday of Jermaine Stoneman, Jerry to some, uh, my mother-in-law, Jane's mother, uh, Natalie and Tim's grandmother, and uh, there will be a graveside service in Guelph sometime in the next week. Early this morning, uh, Yitka Dunbar, who's another member of this faith community, passed away. And the family are just in the process of coming to terms with all of the arrangements that need to be made, so we don't have any arrangements to share with reference to that. And further information regarding both of those losses and families will be made available to us as best we can as soon as we know. And as we normally do, we invite everyone to be supportive of each other, and especially the families that are most intimately involved and uh, connected. Uh, Dennis, you wanted to make an announcement with reference to uh, food basket stuff, and I'll follow you. Okay, good, thank you. Oh, good morning. I just want to extend a huge thank you to our youth group. I know Zoe, Wolf, and Sam, and Sheldon, Jack put it all together for trick or canning. Uh, most of the, a lot of the food out there, in spite of the horrible weather, uh, we were in Ottawa. Uh, we had the same weather there, and it was just absolutely horrendous. So hats off to the youth group. Uh, I'm looking at Zoe right now and say a big smile. Thank you very much. And just, if you see them around, just give them a huge thank you for the food group. The food that the youth group gathered for Halloween is on the table on that side, duly marked. The food that people have been invited to bring in uh, this morning with reference to the uh, Wyerton Salvation Army Food Bank is on uh, the table at the back, appropriately marked as well. Earlier in the week, there was some confusion among some people, earlier in the week being Friday. And uh, so it's all been uh, sorted out. I couldn't understand what the confusion was, but there was some. So just to be clear, the table, did you know that there are two food banks in Port Elgin? Some did and some didn't. Well, there's the Living uh, Hope Food Basket, which is where the food is going that the youth group collected. And then there's the Salvation Army Food Bank. And the Salvation Army Food Bank also works in connection with the Wyerton Salvation Army Food Bank, which the other week was burglarized and food was taken and even uh, the safe that had uh, money and whatnot in it, all the gift cards and everything, uh, was all stolen. So we're looking at trying to support and replenish uh, their supplies and help them. So that's why there are two. The food basket is Living Hope here in town. There is also a food bank here, and we're looking to help the food bank in Wyerton. Are we clear? All right. Are there any other announcements that anyone has to share? You're looking really well rested. That you're not. <laughs> that extra hour has obviously made a remarkable difference for those who actually slept. All right. 
For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land we know to be at the very center of their living, their being, their spirituality. And the United Church of Canada openly acknowledges that we meet regularly on the traditional territory of Indigenous people. We acknowledge their stewardship of this land, we acknowledge their spirituality, and we celebrate both with thanks. Caitlin's going to help me light the candle this morning. I know that's you. You can come forward. And I'm going to ask you to stand over here, okay? Just so we're not crossing, crossing while I have this lit. All right. We're going to reach up like that. Thank you. Now, you want to shut it off? Do you know how to shut this off? Just slide that down. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. We light the Christ candle to remind us that we are followers of the Christ, followers of the light, and it's both our opportunity and responsibility to share the light of Christ with others. I want to thank Ken and Brenda for the wonderful music you offered to us earlier this morning. And no pressure, but I know there's plans for more. So we, uh, we thank you for that already. And especially also uh, the people in the sound booth who had some anxiety earlier this morning because things were not quite working the way we thought they might. How are we doing now? <laughs> you can't see. You can't see. But when I asked that question, uh, Dave just went... <laughs> so we're hopeful. So we've had some uh, difficulty with speed. So if things go a little awry, uh, just let's not worry about it. We'll adjust on the fly. I have no idea how or what, but we will because we can. And we're capable of making that work. On this Sunday, following All Saints Day, we gather here in God's presence and in the midst of the communion of saints to give thanks for the lasting influence they have in our lives. We come seeking God's transforming power that we may carry on the caring work begun by them in God's name. Let's join our hearts and voices together with all the saints throughout time as we worship God today. Let's sing together God, whose almighty word. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. Seated. And I invite you to join me as we offer an opening prayer together. Let's pray together. Ever present God, you are the hope that overcomes despair. You are the peace that overcomes anxiety. You are the joy that overcomes discontent. You are the love that overcomes apathy. 
We thank you and praise your name. You are the way, and in faith, we will follow your guiding light. Amen. I invite any Discovery Cove children to join me at the front of the church here, please. You're already here. I know. So am I. And here comes some more. Careful, Jax. I hope your brakes work. I'm wondering whether there are any of us here this morning who, because of bigger people around us, have ever had difficulty trying to see something that we wanted to see. Has that ever happened? Back there. <laughs> yes, Patty. You want to tell us about it? Ah, uh, yes, some of us do grow laterally more easily than vertically. Any, has that ever happened to you? Have you ever been to a parade? You've been to a parade? And you've been standing at the parade, and there are people standing in front of you, and the part of the parade that you want to see, you can't because of the people in front of you? What might we do? Yes, Caitlin. Okay, just a minute, Cape. Yes, Caitlin. I'm sorry? You can say, excuse me, obviously. I wasn't going there at all, but that's probably the best answer of all. <laughs> exactly. Yes, what might we do? Um, you can do, you can shoot them. I wouldn't think we'd want to do that. If you and I were standing here, you come here, stand with me, Gabe, okay? You come here, stand with me, okay? And, and, and let, 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 let's assume, okay, Clara, you want to stand right in front of Gabe? Yeah. All right. So, if you're like that and you can't see, you know what I could do to make it easier for you? I could pick you up. I, tr trust me. Okay, okay, okay. Trust me. I would. That's okay, Clara. He's fine. You can go and sit again. Thanks for your help. I, can, I, I would ask permission first. Has anybody ever sat on a parent's shoulders? In order to see things? Sure. I thought that's the answer you'd be giving me right off the bat. Has anyone ever climbed a tree? I have. I've climbed trees all the time. Are you supposed to? I'm a crazy kid. <laughs> have you ever climbed a tree? When we're up a tree, we can see or look out an upstairs window of a home. We can see things that we can't always see when we're on the ground. We're going to sing a song about a story. Yes, Fiona? And we were going to sing a song about a man who was short. And Jesus was coming through town. And this man, his name was Zacchaeus, if we today would probably call him Zac, because it's easier to say than Zacchaeus. He was really intent, really wanted to see Jesus, so he climbed up a tree. And we're going to sing a song about Zacchaeus. How many of us here remember singing or learning as youngsters. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house. Actually, the words we're using, I'm going to your house today. I learned the words, I'm going to your house for tea, so it rhymed, but nonetheless. All right? You may not be able to remember all those words. Uh, the words are going to be before us. There, there's the start. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you to help me with some actions. Are we ready for actions? Are we sure? You have the paper. Zacchaeus, why well, see my hands? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. All right? Someone is going to give us an introduction. We're going to sing it through, just so you know, 
We're going to sing it through twice, but we're going to stop after we've sung it the first time in case there's anything we need to brush up on. Are we good so far? Go ahead, Brenda. Yep. Okay, here we go. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into the sycamore tree, for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. Now, some of us have had it done a real good job of watching. So this time, I invite you to actually join us in the actions. Let's give it a shot once more. Here we go. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into the sycamore tree, for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. Who can tell me the name of the little man who climbed the tree? Can you say it together? Zacchaeus. Well done. And if we wanted to give Zacchaeus a shorter name, how might we refer to him? Zac. Bang on. Thanks for your attention and your help. We're going to have a responsive prayer, an echo prayer. You pray after me and then you can make your way off with your teachers, okay? Let's pray. You follow me. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you for parents, for family, for teachers. Help us to learn more about your way. Amen. Thanks for all your help. Make your way carefully and quietly up the slope. It's okay to pass, just don't run over anyone, please. Yeah.
Our reading this morning is from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10, found in the Pew Bible on page 630. Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He is gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. How many of us have ever stuck a piece of child art on a refrigerator? (laughs) Or maybe it's not a piece of child art, but maybe it's a very brightly, some might say garishly colored rock that has been received and now functions as a paperweight. Maybe it's a Father's Day card that has come to us as fathers as a result of the efforts of a class at school. One of those things that withstands the test of time. Now, any or all of these we know and keep because we consider them to be prized possessions, cherished, wouldn't get rid of them. At the same time, you and I know that if we tried to sell them, their marketability is zip, nil, nada, wouldn't get a cent. We'd probably have to pay someone to take it off our hands. But they're cherished by us. Why? Because of the one who gave whatever it was to us. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of someone's love, someone's care, someone's concern, someone's passion. The giver, not the gift is what's special. Celebrating and remembering and honoring the giver rather than the gift is the key. That kind of gratitude, I'm here to tell you, can change our lives. And there's a beautiful example of this in the Gospels. The story of Zacchaeus about which we sang And the story, as we heard it shared with us, recorded in the gospel. We've heard it now in two different ways. So I invite us to remember it one more time with me. Jesus and his disciples are heading towards Jerusalem. As they pass through Jericho, a great crowd begins to form. The scriptures remind us that Zacchaeus was a tax collector. 
a chief tax collector at that, which means he had people under him doing his work for him. We also know that he was disliked. Not necessarily because he was rich, but because he was rich unfairly at the expense of others. And he was also despised because he was a Jew. And the Jews hated the Romans and especially hated paying taxes to the Romans. And Zacchaeus, as a Jew, was seen as someone who had turned his back on his own people and was now catering to the Romans. If we had done a Gallup poll in Jericho that day, Zacchaeus would have come out dead last in popularity. That's the scene. People had heard all kinds of stories about this man called Jesus. And they were gathering to catch a glimpse of him, as people are prone to do. Zacchaeus wanted to see him too. Being somewhat vertically challenged, he climbed a tree so that he could better see when Jesus came by. Along comes the man for whom they've been waiting. Jesus sees Zacchaeus, challenges him to come down out of the tree, and at the same time invites himself to Zacchaeus' home. Now, Zacchaeus was just overwhelmed. Overawed. First of all, that anyone would pay him enough attention to stop and address him. Oh, he'd been addressed lots of times, but addressed civilly. And Zacchaeus felt gratitude. So much gratitude that his whole lifestyle changed. It even touched his pocketbook. Before he'd been a taker, after this experience with Jesus, he became a giver. That's what real gratitude does. It changes our lives from the inside out. And one of the reasons that Zacchaeus felt so much gratitude If we back up a step, I just quickly glossed over the reality that Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. Did anybody else in reading the story ever wonder about that? No? Okay. How many of us would not even raise an eyebrow if I just came to you and said, Oh, by the way, I'm going to be at your place for dinner. I've seen a few eyes go up right now. (laughs) What that self-invitation spoke to in Jesus' day was an act of forgiveness. I am inviting myself to your house as a clear sign and symbol of forgiveness. My forgiveness of you and who you are and what you've done and how you've lived your life to this point. Real gratitude gives us a new relationship with God. When we realize that God is loving, accepting, forgiving, it changes us. We don't have to be afraid or anxiety ridden anymore. Gratitude becomes the lifeblood of our lifestyle. Zacchaeus learned it that day. And it gave him a new relationship with his creator God. Not a relationship built on fear and appeasement, but now a relationship built on love and acceptance and grace. 
As Jesus came to him and spoke to him and accepted him, that acceptance touched something so deeply embedded in Zacchaeus that it changed his life completely. When we can love God and accept God's love for us, I know for me, it causes me to see things differently. There are so many things as we look around that remind us of God. And all that God has already given us, all that God daily does for us, the very breath of life, real gratitude gives us a new relationship with God. Albert Einstein once put it like this. There are only two ways to live your life. One is to see nothing as a miracle. The other is to see everything as a miracle. It's the number one thing I see in this Zacchaeus story. Real gratitude gives us a new relationship with God. Secondly, real gratitude gives us a new regard for others. You may say, well, duh, of course. We respond and react to others pretty much dependent on how we're feeling about ourselves. If I'm feeling uptight and pressured and exhausted and whatnot, the chances are I might be with others just slightly less gracious than if I'm feeling on top of the world. Has anyone here, is anyone here prepared to admit that you've ever read the Wizard of Id comic strip? A few brave people. All right. In one of those Wizard of Id comic strips, the priest asks, Of all the major sins, which do you consider to be number one? The question again, of all the major sins, which do you consider to be number one? Well, came the reply, they're all bad, but I think I like greed the best. <laughs> Give it a minute, it'll settle. They're all bad, but I think I like greed the best. Well, Zacchaeus could have easily said, I resemble that. He'd been greedy, he'd cheated, he'd taken advantage of others. Jesus approached him, spoke to him, reached out to him, included him, ate with him. Eating with someone, a dramatic symbol of forgiveness. And Zacchaeus was changed, totally. He had a new regard for others, to the point that he said, you know, the half of my goods I give to the poor and I'll pay back four times all those that I've cheated. That's what real gratitude does. It enables us to see others differently. A while ago I ran across a story about a young college student who was visited one weekend by his father. And his father drove up in a very old, dilapidated vehicle and after the visit, when he drove away, some of his son's college friends were making fun of this young man's father. Not so much his father, but the dilapidated vehicle in which he was traveling. And the young man said, you can laugh if you want to, but let me tell you something. My father could have had a new car years ago if he wanted to. He had the money for it. But you know what he chose to do? He chose to make sure that I could enroll in this particular school so that I could get the education that this particular school offers while he continues to drive his old dilapidated car. I love that old dilapidated car and further, I love the one who drives it. That's the way it works. The Zacchaeus story reminds me that real gratitude gives us a new relationship with God 
and a new relationship with others. Third, and there are four, okay? This is the third. And last, finally, for those who want to hear that word, it's my belief that the best way to express our gratitude to God is to imitate, to emulate, to model God's generosity in our daily living. Small ways, big ways. Zacchaeus got it. He saw it, and he did it. Do we? Bill and Tom were best buds. They'd grown up together, hunted and fished together. One Saturday morning while hunting, Bill was climbing over a barbed wire fence, fell, his gun went off, and he shot himself in the leg. Tom rushed in, made a tourniquet to slow the profuse bleeding. Then Tom picked Bill up, put him on his back, carried him over three kilometers through rough terrain to get to their car and onto the hospital for emergency surgery. It went well, and the doctor told Bill what he already knew. Tom had saved his life. Some years later, Tom had to undergo heart surgery, and Bill stayed with Tom and Tom's wife 24-7 for days and days. They told him to go home. The hospital staff told him to go home. Bill thanked them for the concern, and then he told them how Tom had carried him on his back to save his life years earlier. And he said, After what Tom did for me, there's nothing I would not do for him. I owe him my life. That's how Zacchaeus felt about what Jesus did for him. That's how we as followers of the way can feel because of what Jesus has done for us. He's given us a new relationship with God, a new regard for others, and a new reason for living. May it be so. Amen. Momentarily, as part of our worship, we're going to be sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion. So I invite us to keep that aspect of our worship in mind as we sing together the first three verses of this hymn, Here, O my Lord, I see you face to face. As we share of who we are and what we have, in response to God's call to work with God in creation, 
We are responding out of the gratitude we feel for all that God has given to us and done for us. As we make our offerings, we worship God. As our offerings are received, we worship God. Let's continue in our worship of God. that who we are and what we have come to us as gifts from you. And so we offer of ourselves, asking you to bless our giving and our living. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Please be seated. As we prepare to share in the sacrament, I invite us to adopt an attitude of prayer, which means you don't need to put your head down and close your eyes. You can if you wish. If you wish to sit and listen prayerfully to the words of preparation leading us into the sacrament, just do what works best for us. Creator God, from the very beginning of time you have loved your people feeding and nourishing us as from your own body. When our ancestors were slaves in Egypt, you heard their cry and brought them to freedom. Their bread didn't even have time to rise, yet they followed when you called. When they became hungry on the journey, they complained to you, and you offered them manna. Centuries later, your people came to Christ Jesus, hungry for a healing word and strength for the journey. Christ fed them, and yet they demanded more. Holy One, there are days that we are like those people. We complain when we think we don't have enough and we demand more. Yet you offer us all the things we need each day. Still, sometimes we feel unsatisfied. Yet in face of all of this, you have never given up on us, but continue to reach out and touch us. You sent Jesus, the very bread of life, to be one of us and to share our very life. So, God, as we share this holy meal, may we feel ever closer to you, God of grace, God of unconditional love. Help us to let go of all that weighs upon us and find ourselves nourished by simple bread and juice. Help us to know the presence of the living Christ ever and always in our midst. Holy One, hear us as we continue in prayer as our Lord has taught us. Sing together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We remember how on the night that he was betrayed, being gathered with his disciples, his closest friends, offering words of blessing and thanksgiving, Jesus broke the bread. And he said to those with him, this is my body, broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and again, offering words of blessing and thanksgiving. He shared with those gathered with him. This is the blood of the new covenant. My life blood poured out for each and every one of you. Each time you drink from this cup, remember me. Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus, the cup of blessing. There are no barriers to sharing in this sacrament. All who acknowledge Jesus as God's Son are invited to be a part of the celebration. We're going to be coming forward in a moment that I will explain now. Last time I think I did something that caused something a turn of thought. For Let us pray. Holy One, for the bread that we have received, for the cup from which we've had to drink, 
for the life that we have received. We give you thanks. Grant that what we've said and done here may put its mark upon us, that we may continue as your faithful following disciples. Amen. Let us build a house. The words will be before us momentarily. And our wandering minstrel makes her way to the organ. As we move from this particular way of thinking and worship into another act of this faith community, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and abiding presence of God's Spirit be with each one of us and all whom we love, indeed all God's people everywhere, now and always. We'll sing our choral response, Spirit of Life. And then the congregational meeting will begin. <laughs> 